Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. And you know I love to talk about galaxies and nebulae out in the deep space. But what about local items such as our solar system? Yeah, we got some activity going on right now in the southwestern sky with Venus and Jupiter and in the eastern sky with a new visitor, a once in a lifetime visitor, a new comet. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I do a lot of videos on deep space objects, the galaxies and the nebulae up in the sky. Uh, recently, I just shot the uh, uh, Rosette Nebula and the Orion Nebula. Uh, however, uh, I also like to shoot planetary objects and solar system objects, including the planets of uh, Venus, which is now shining brilliantly out in the southwestern sky. Now, if you go outside it's, uh, in the evening, you can't miss it unless there's clouds out there. You just can't miss it. It looks like a beacon high in the southwestern sky. If you look at Venus through the telescope, which I did with the uh, Orion Eon 130 uh, scope, uh, it shows phases like the phases of the moon. Right now, it's a waning crescent, and it's getting thinner and thinner. And as it gets thinner and thinner, it's actually actually going to get bigger and bigger in size because it's getting closer and closer to the Earth. Uh, and, and that's going to just dominate our sky for the next several weeks. And, and right now it's at its most brilliant magnitude, minus 4.7. Extremely bright. As a matter of fact, it is the third brightest object in the sky. Not in just nighttime sky, but in the sky. Uh, if you know where to look, you can even see Venus in the daytime. But uh, the only thing sh brighter than Venus are the moon and the sun. So, you know, Venus right now uh, is uh, being followed by Jupiter, and uh, between Jupiter and Venus is a dimly lit object, that's Saturn. So you have all three planets right there in the south, southwestern sky throughout the month of December. But more importantly, for me anyway, is this visitor arriving in the eastern morning sky. Speaking of visitors, I had a visitor in the Heavenly Backyard Garden uh, last week. You know, I have a pond back here in my fountain, and in the fountain I have uh, and in the pond, in the fountain, I have some goldfish, about 30 goldfish now. I started off with six. I got about 30 now. But this little visitor came by looking for lunch. I mean, I can't blame him. I mean, it, it is a fish eater. It's an egret. The egret came over for a visit, and uh, well, one of the things about the visit was the cat, Grizabella, was not pleased at all uh, with this visitor. Anyway, I put in a cover on the pond to help give the fish a place to escape uh, from becoming lunch. But uh, going back to the heavenly visitors, and this is a new comet. It was discovered in early January of 2021 uh, by G.J. Leonard. Is it Leonard or Leonard? I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I kind of like and leaning toward Leonard. Uh, Leonard? Um, Leonard. Anyway, it's a comet that right now is at magnitude 8. And you, you can't see that with the naked eye. It takes at least a, a below 5, 4 or 5 to see with the naked eye in the very dark portions of the world. But uh, in the cities, it has to be at least lower than 3, perhaps lower than 2. Uh, the predictions are that this comet might get below magnitude 3, even some wild predictions that might even get to magnitude 1, which is about as bright as what you're seeing Saturn now in the southwestern sky. However, the, uh, the comet is, is shining as a green color in the eastern morning sky. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, with the telescope, I'm able to view it out in the eastern sky. And uh, uh, it's going to be getting closer and closer. As a matter of fact, it is moving toward the sun right now. It's still between the orbits of the Earth and Mars, but quickly approaching the uh, uh, orbit of Earth. That should arrive around December 12th. And just six days later, Comet Leonard will be passing Venus. And then after that, it'll be passing the sun in early January. And actually, will it make it around the sun? That's a good question. Chances are it'll be uh, disintegrated as it goes around the sun. If it doesn't, it might appear in the um, sky in the mornings in the month of January, late January and in February. But I wouldn't hold my breath on that. But right now, Leonard is traveling at a, a, an incredible velocity of 42 kilometers per second. Well, put that into miles per hour, that's about 
8,000 miles per hour. It's going from Earth to Venus in just six days. I mean, no spacecraft that we have on Earth can do that. But anyway, the comet is there. And the question is, how do I find the comet? How do I point my telescope to it? Well, let me show you a way of doing that through Stellarium. It's easy to set up and it sets right into the telescope. And with Nina, I'm able to record the comet. All right, so the first thing you want to do if you want to use Stellarium is to download it if you don't already have it. And the website is simple, it's stellarium.org. And you can choose your uh, operating system, either Windows 32-bit or most likely Windows 64-bit. And there you have it right there and download the uh, software and follow the instructions. The next thing you want to do once you have it downloaded, if you already have it, just double click on Stellarium and let it open up. And this is my default window since I'm doing this in the early afternoon. It shows me the daytime setting. I'll go over here by taking your mouse to the left side of the screen and click on configuration window. And from there, uh, move over to plugins. Click on plugins and then scroll down until you find solar system editor. And then if this box is not already checked, check it so you can open up the configuration file. And then from there, you have these options at the top. Uh, click on Solar System, and then click on this box down at the bottom, this bar here, where it says Import Orbital Elements in MPC Format. Click on that, and it defaults to Asteroids, but you want to click on Comets. Click on Comets, and then uh, open up this uh, selection box here, and pick on MPC's List of Observable Comets. Click on that, and then Get Orbital Elements. Now. I already have the comet loaded in my system. If, if you don't, you know, it won't show up there at the very, very top. It'll be somewhere down buried in this rather large list here. But the easy way to do it, just type in uh, C slash 2021 slash A1. And there it is, Leonard. And click on this little box right here and then add objects right there. You're done. All right, next thing we want to do is close these windows. Let's go to the uh, time in the morning that I want to look at. And uh, it's easy to go to the time in, in Stellarium. Just click on the F5 button and you have your date and time. Uh, November 25th, when I took this picture that I'm showing, I'll be showing you shortly. And um, it was at four o'clock, oh, I'm at five o'clock in the morning. So let's go down to five. Uh, 509, that's fine. All right, I can close out this window here. And now go back over to this little uh, menu here on the left and uh, go to the search menu, search window, or you can type in F3 if you already have, a, you know, your shortcut keys. And I already typed it in once, but if, if it's not, just type in your uh, C slash, oops, slash, 2021 uh, and there it shows up right there or you can even just type in Leonard and there it shows up right there and just click on search and it'll take you to it there it is right there now there's the bright star Octaurus just to the uh, east of it but if I can zoom in by scrolling with my mouse or using the page up key uh, there you can see the uh, comet right there now, also, there's two galaxies just uh, uh, to the west of it or above it. And this one right here is known as the hockey stick galaxies because it looks like a big old hockey stick. And um, that could be the puck right there. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to show you something here. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. Oops, zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to show you how fast this comet is moving in the sky. So let's bring this up because it's going to be approaching the horizon, which is down here. This is almost east right here. And now, let's start the date increase. You can see how it's moving toward the horizon. And by um, December 6th, it'll be just passing just to the left of Arcturus. And at that time, the magnitude will be estimated at five and a half. And if we continue on our motion 
And by the 12th, it passes the daylight horizon at this hour. Let's see if I can, at six o'clock in the morning now, um, it is very low in the eastern sky and moves out of the scene into the, almost the evening sky. I'm in daylight now, but it's gone. There you can see how you can use Stellarium to find the comet in the sky. And if you have this connected up with the, uh, your um, telescope, if you, and if you have your telescope set up to EQMOD or GS server, a green swamp server, uh, and you connect that up into Stellarium as well, and then all you have to do is uh, have your selected object here in Control 1 would actually send that object reference to the telescope and the telescope should move directly to it if your telescope is already aligned. So you know, that makes it a lot easier to find other than searching around for it. But uh, yeah, Control 1 sends it to the object that you're focused on here, the, it being the telescope. And you, so you can use Stellarium to zero right in on, on the comet. So if you want to add Stellarium to your telescope, uh, once again, you go back into that configuration window and uh, right there, click on that and go back to plugins and now go down to, all the way down to not solar system editor now, but telescope control. Click on that and this, you know, make sure it's load on a startup or at startup and then hit con the configure one. Click on the configuration wrench here. And from there, um, click on the ASCOM. Uh, if you already have your uh, EQ mod or Green Swamp server or CPWI, uh, click on ASCOM. And then um, make sure that uh, these are, are, are set the default um, uh, Julian 12, 2000 or 2000. And uh, start uh, connect at startup and yes. And scroll down to here choose ASCOM telescope okay and from there you have the options you get this uh, ASCOM um, telescope chooser and you have the different uh, devices that are loaded into your computer and for example the ASCOM green swamp or GS server sky telescope uh, CPWI if you're using the uh, Celestron uh, tracking system um, and there you have the ASCOM uh, EQ mod uh, HEQ 5 and 6 and that's that's mine right there and then you say okay and then okay and everything else is over here let's see anything below me uh, no everything's okay and now you're ready to connect and when you uh, connect you are connected to your telescope and also if you um, go to the help file here uh, once you connect your telescope, you have all these options to begin with. Um, you go all the way down, and if the telescope is connected, you'll get these help values for the uh, telescope. All right, there. Telescope controls. You know, if you have any comments about my video, go ahead and, and, and place your comments below. And uh, it, it wouldn't hurt if you hit the like button. Of course, if you don't like it, don't hit the like button. Uh, but it helps with the algorithm, that YouTube algorithm, whatever that thing is, that uh, the more likes it sees, the better it exposes the videos to the rest of the YouTube community, which there are millions of people out there. So I wouldn't have, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button, again, if you, if you like the video. Well, I hope you can get a chance to get out throughout the evening skies and, and, and enjoy the brilliance of Venus shining in the southwestern sky. And look right behind it and you'll see Jupiter as well. In between Jupiter and Venus, uh, dimly lit the planet Saturn. But in the eastern sky, you get up early in the morning. If you have some binoculars or a small telescope, that's all you need. You can see comet C2021 space A1. Leonard. Now remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders, and they're all in a sky near you. So get out and enjoy the heavens. And unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. Lit Jupiter, all in the sky in the southwestern evening skies throughout the month of February and January.
and I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I kind of like Leonard myself. I'm, I'm leaning toward Leonard. Uh, it just has a ring to it. What do you think? Anyway, Leonard's fine. Uh, Comet is really moving fast right now at 42 kilometers per second. Uh, if you want to put that in miles per hour, I think that comes out to be 92,000 miles per, no, no, 96,000. Well, I have it written down here. What is it? 94,000 miles per hour. Yeah, that's boogieing. Uh, and that helps a lot, but I still get up to check it. And once I see everything's running smoothly, I, I go back to bed uh, because I'm a lazy guy, I suppose. And yeah, and, you, and, you <laughs> and if you look at Venus through the telescope, which I did with this, as I did with this scope here, which one is it? Yeah. The, uh, the comet is obviously visible through small telescopes and binoculars. Go away. <laughs> Ragweed. Well, actually, that's goldenrod. <laughs> Go away. That's goldenrod. Anyway, a little breezy out here today. The uh, comet.